I'm so excited today to share with you this strange little pattern that I created, this interesting design. And I can tell you that I was having so much fun creating this that I didn't even think of recording it. So I was just at my kitchen table. I went and grabbed my journal, grabbed a pen and just started creating all these little arches. And before I knew it, this crazy little thing happened and it's done now. So in order to share it with you, I'm going to make a little sample for you so that you can see just how it happened and also so that you can sp experience with me the joy of experimentation and the joy of finding out what happens when you just mess around. So to get started here, I'm just going to grab a little sheet of paper and the sheet's pretty small. It's my usual size around four or five inches, just a little rectangle. And when I start this pattern, the simplest thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a marker. Right now I'm using a Sharpie. But I am going to use a larger marker just to get started. It's really only giving me these edges to work with because as you can see in the original drawing, I created these kind of ribbons or these, these lines to confine the design. So I'm just going to make that right here. So I'm just making those lines. I'm going to add another line to the other side. And now that I think about it, I may not even need to have those. It's just right now because I'm barely getting familiar with this design. I'm more comfortable with it being inside of a little space like that. Because if I just had the entire page to work with, it might make it much more daunting. So this is just something that makes it easier. So as you can see, I just started by drawing an arch and then I came in and drew another arch and another and they are not right next to each other. They're spread out. There's quite a bit of space in between them. And I'm also making sure that each one of these arches is of a different size. So you'll notice that some are smaller, some are taller, some are wider. So here I'm just adding a really tall one right here, a small one, and a bigger one. And so now that I've had time to put these initial shapes in, I'm going to follow it up by filling in the spaces now. And so let's say right here, I'm going to put in a couple of arches. So there is a smaller one. Notice how they're very close together now. There's a medium one. And in that small space that's left, I'm just going to put a little one there. So there we go. Little in the sense that it's, it's kind of thin, but it ended up being a little tall. So here I'm going to do one that's very different. Notice I'm going to come up and it's going to curve and then it's going to touch in the middle somewhere. It's not going to go all the way down to the bottom because I'm going to put this line here and then I'm going to carry it back up. And then I'm going to create an arch there. So you'll notice that what it looks like now is like those little tendrils are crossing instead of just going straight down. And over here, I'm just going to put a simple arch. And so I'm just going to continue this pattern. I'm going to continue over here with more arches. So most of what I'm doing here in the design is just lots and lots of arches of different sizes. So I'm just going to move this over here a little bit so that you can compare it somewhat to what I have in the book. So right here, and I'm going to continue with another shape right here. And I'm going to go up and let it curve and it's going to touch in the middle. That way I make this little line here and then an arch there and they, it looks like they're crossing. I just thought that was a fun little addition to the design so that way they weren't just arches. It's nice seeing them kind of crisscross like that. So now I'll add a few more. And maybe just one more to the end here that's crossing. So there it is, that final arch on that side. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the other side. So again, you'll see just a couple of them. There's a small one. 
and then this one right here. There we go, a tall one and a short one. And right here I'm going to make one that crosses over. So there it is. It crosses and then I bring it up and complete another arch. So you'll notice it's fun making them fit into small spaces, into large spaces, just all sorts of different spaces. Going to fit one right here that's crossing over. And then fill a little arch right there. So that was that looks pretty good. Just have a few more left to do. So that one's going to cross over as well. And I have room for a few right here. Maybe one right there that's smaller. And one that's going to cross over right here. And then we're getting to the end right here and we're just going to add a few more. This one's going to cross as well. Why not? There's lots of space there. And so again, when I did this pattern, I was just experimenting. I had no idea what was going to happen. And it was just so wonderful to see such an interesting texture happen right in front of my eyes. And so this is the texture that happened. It was so interesting. It reminds me of so many different things of bacteria. It reminds me even of cobwebs. And so I haven't even added any color. I haven't added any shading. So if you want to stick around just a little longer, I'm going to show you kind of what it looks like when I start adding in that ink into those little negative spaces so that you see how it really works out. So here I am just filling some of the spaces. So you can watch it kind of develop really slowly. I'm already thinking of this pattern and I think it's going to look amazing in the background of another drawing. So I might add in a few main elements to the front of my drawing, like let's say some of my favorite orbs. So a couple of spheres in the foreground and then I could fill the background with this pattern but not this big. I would probably make it much, much smaller and just see what happens in the background as I fill that in. So I am so excited to try this one out on one of my bigger drawings, but it just feels so good right now that I'm going to have this pattern in my book so that I can go back and reference it just in case I run out of time or I forget that I have it. That way it's just so rewarding going back and looking at my book. And so the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to add those little circles and I don't have to add these. I'm even thinking that I might try later breaking up that space in some other way and adding other little textures inside of there. That might be interesting too. But for now, all I'm doing is I'm essentially adding these kind of holes, breaking up the space even further with these little circles and ovals, little smooth, smooth shapes. And I'm just going to continue on that way, filling in the entire space. So you see there, I'm also varying their size. Some of them are very small. Some of them are incredibly tiny and some of them are large. Because I do have a tendency to draw organic shapes. This is one of those. I would love to know what you see here. What do you see in this shape? Do you think of biology? Maybe you're thinking of alien life. Maybe cobwebs like I do. What do you see here? This is so interesting. I'd love to see what you think. Is this something that you would try out? How do you feel about this one? I'm incredibly excited. I love this kind of design. I love it when it's abstract, when it could be interpreted a hundred different ways. And so this is it. This is the result. I don't even know what to call it. If you can help me figure out what to name it, I would be so grateful. So of course, I am so glad that you've joined me. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing day.